So as we all know, as fans of championship clubs, loan players can make absolutely all the difference. But who are currently the best loanees playing in the championship? Let's find out. So guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. What I thought we'd do today is compile the best possible starting 11 made up only of players loaned into the championship. Over the years, we've had some great talent on display, the likes of Reese James, Tammy Abraham, Mason Mount, but this season especially, we've got some big names in here. So what I want you guys to go ahead and do is leave in the comments down below who you believe to be the best current loan players playing in the championship. Thumbs up who you think's made a good team, and we'll give them a shout out next time. But before we do get into anything, I must say, please do go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you've not already we're trying to hit 30,000 subscribers and we're not actually all too far away so if you do go ahead and enjoy the content you've seen make sure to go ahead and subscribe we've got a lot of things planned for when we hit 30k so it would be massively appreciated but today I thought this could be an interesting concept so as you can see on screen now those are the players that you have to pick from from loans currently playing in the championship there's quite a range in there in terms of different positions in terms of personnel being loaned in to different positions as well and there's quite a bit of quality I'd say so I'm interested to see some of the teams that you guys come up with. And speaking of the teams that you guys come up with, last time we did this video, we did it on the best possible international starting 11. I asked you guys for your suggestions and the most upvoted comment last time came from Adam. This was his team. I mean, there's a lot of star power in this one, isn't there? With a forward four of Pookie, AU, Rooney and Saar, I mean, that would score goals for days in the championship, wouldn't it? So fair play to Adam for compiling some starting 11 there. I also thought I'd give a bit of a shout out to Sean the Blue as well for coming up with this iconic team of Lee Camps. I mean, where would that finish in the championship? championship probably top <laughs> Before we do get into my starting 11, let's go over my bench. Coming in as my sub goalie, I've gone for Swansea City's Freddie Woodman. I thought that Swansea did well to get him back on loan after how well he did there last season. Probably one of the best sort of acrobatical and young goalkeepers in the league. He's been just as good so far this season. He makes it onto my bench. Next to him, I'm going to have Norwich City's Ben Gibson. One of the few sort of, I suppose, criticisms that we could have thrown from Norwich's promotion last time from the championship was they could be a little bit leaky at the back, but so far, whenever Gibson's featured, he's been a really solid a member of that back line and seemingly is looking to get his career back on track after things sort of just stuttered for him at Burnley. As our third player on the bench, we're going to have Coventry City's Ben Sheaf. So far this season, I think has formed a good partnership with Gustavo Hamer. I think that those two bounce off each other quite well. And as the season goes on, I'm looking forward to seeing how that partnership develops. But so far this season, he's in the top five tacklers in the league with 26 completed tackles. So far this season, he's a tough one to get past. Another option in midfield could be James Garner as well. He's going to be coming in on loan from Manchester United there was a lot of interest in Garner over the summer and last season as well so far this season it's taken him a bit of time to adapt to that role but I think he's growing into it as the season's gone on it's an area where he's got quite a bit of competition but so far this season I think he's getting better and better now my fifth choice for the bench may be a bit of a controversial one because he is out injured for the next three months but Morgan Gibbs White for Swansea City could turn out to be a pivotal player in the running for Swansea you know when he could, does get back from this injury it'll pretty much be like they've signed a new player. In the brief moments that we did see him play earlier on in the season though, I think there's a real player on their hands there, Swansea obviously. Coming on loan from Wolves this season, he mostly played in that number 10 role for them. A goal and assist in the four appearances he did make in the league. I think when he does get back from that injury, he can have quite a bit to offer. My sixth substitute on the bench is going to be Nottingham Forest, Anthony Knockout. Now we all know what Knockout's about at this level. His best season at this level came in Brighton's promotion season. In that season, got 15 goals and eight assists being a real key integral member of that side however last season for Fulham he was more of a moments player his game has adapted over the years but with that left foot of his he is someone who can make a game flip just like that and then as my final substitute on the bench I'm going to have Blackburn Rovers Harvey Elliott coming on loan from Liverpool this season in such a short period of time he's already shown us what he's about I think that his link up with Armstrong as the season goes on is something really quite exciting he's already got one goal and three assists for himself. He's averaging 2.8 key passes per 90. He's got fantastic vision about him and I think that with the way that Blackburn like to play football fast and on the counter attack that'll suit Harvey Elliott down to a T. But as you can see that is the bench that I'm currently lining up with so all players who are very close to making it into my starting 11 but speaking of that let's hop into my main 11. So coming in in goal it's got to be Marcus Bettinelli with his goalkeeping record so far this season for Middlesbrough. He's been absolutely superb. Only five goals conceded after 11 matches 
matches. He's kept six clean sheets as well. And this seemingly was the sort of move that he was in need of in terms of his career, obviously. We covered him on the channel last season where they didn't have the greatest of times with Fulham. Obviously, he had Rodak who was really jumping at the bit, trying to take his place and eventually did succeed him as that number one for them. But back in the championship now under Neil Warnock, he's been a safe pair of hands. Now, coming in the right back, I'm going to go for Reading's Thomas S. Steves. Now, does he have a bit of a mistake in him? Yes, I think that that's something that you're going to get from a lot of young defenders, really. Obviously, he's a Portuguese 18-year-old who's come over from Porto. However, he does excite me going forward. And I think that given a full season in the championship with the sort of football that Reading like to play and what they expect from their fullbacks, I still hold quite high expectations for him come the end of the season. I do think he is quite an exciting player. Coming in as my first centre-half, I've gone for Swansea City's Mark Wahey. Now, there's probably more impetus on him at the back now because of the departure of Joe Roden, obviously. It was such a nice back three that they had while Roden was there, but now without him, there's even more emphasis that's going to be put on Guayhi, but so far this season, probably one of the best defenders in the league, actually. Swansea have been able to keep things incredibly tight at the back. He's someone who not only reads the game as well as he does, but also can pick a pass going forward as well. Then coming in alongside him, we are going to have Alfie Mawson. Now, he is currently out with an injury. That's something that he has struggled with throughout his career. However, there could be back around that Christmas period and what he showed at Bristol City this seemingly was the perfect move for him similar to Marcus Bettinelli his career as of late at Fulham did seem to fall off a little bit he was really hyped up from his time at Swansea but at Fulham never really seemed to deliver the odds however he really seemed to fit in at Bristol City with that back three that they were playing with it seemed to suit his game down to a T and it was a shame that he picked up the injury but when he does get himself back fit if he gets back up and going again I quite like Alfie Mawson in that setup that they've got there. Then in at left back, we're going to have undoubtedly one of the most exciting fullbacks in the league at the moment. That is Norwich City's Javi Quintia. So far this season, he's created more chances than any other defender, averaging 2.6 chances created per 90 in the league. And we all know the way that Norwich like to use their fullbacks. It was an integral part of that system which got them promoted with Max Aarons on the other side and with how their left side of the attacker likes to play, you know, whether that be Placetta or Arnold Hernandez, with them liking to tuck inside, it gives their fullback loads of space to go ahead and make those overlapping runs and so far this season he's been absolutely superb at that. Now for my formation I've gone for sort of like a 4-2-3-1 so I've got two holding midfielders the first of which is going to be Millwall's Ryan Woods. Really quite an underrated player in the championship he was absolutely brilliant from his time at Brentford did fall off at Stoke but since being back with Garawa at Millwall I think he's been absolutely superb. He's brilliant at picking out a key pass from those deep line positions. He keeps Millwall ticking along and I think that he's got quite a few aspects to his game really both in an offensive and defensive standpoint he's tenacious he's got a bundle of energy about him he's non-stop throughout the 90 minutes and i think that when he's not playing for millwall they're a lot easier to get at and then coming in alongside him we are going to have norwich city's oliver skip so the third norwich player that's been involved in this video so far i think that out of all the championship clubs they probably played the loan market the best so far you have to say haven't they but oliver skip no doubt has like premier league pedigree about him and i think they're quite similar actually to a player like Ryan Woods very good at picking those key passes from deep line positions and has also got quite a bit to his game as well tenacious off the ball good defensive work rate but he also keeps them ticking along and moving forward obviously with the sort of possession heavy sort of philosophy that Norwich and like to play with Oliver Skip has been a perfect fit into that system so far and as the season develops I think he's only going to go on and get more and more important to them moving into the forward four though this is where the team starts to get really exciting coming in on that right Right hand side, I think you all know what's coming here. It's got to be Lee Camp. Harry Wilson. Last time at this level with Derby County, 20 goal contributions, 16 goals and 4 assists that season. He's already started out life at Cardiff quite brightly with 2 goals already to his name. Obviously, loves a pop from outside the box. And I think that Cardiff have had a bit of an indifferent start to the season so far, but if they do eventually make anything of their season, Harry Wilson, I think, is going to be central to that in terms of the creativity going forward and what he'll actually offer to this Cardiff side. You know, if you look into their strength you know from scoring from set piece and things like that the actual danger men that they could have coming up into the box Harry Wilson you'd imagine is going to get a bucket load of assists this season from corners and free kicks and things like that and also adds his own quality with the finishing touch as well so Harry Wilson this season I still do think that Cardiff will
will come good eventually. When they do, I think that Harry Wilson's got to be central to that. But Cardiff themselves have had quite a few decent low knees so far. Ojo's been another one who's caught my eye, but I think that Harry Wilson's got to make it in. Now, coming in next to him in that number 10 position, maybe a bit of a controversial one, I'm going to go for Luke Freeman. And it has been a pretty slow start to life at Forest so far for Luke Freeman. Forest fans, do let me know in the comments down below what have you actually made of him so far, because if we look at his track record in the championship, it's absolutely superb. His last two seasons at this level with QPR, he came up with 30 goal contributions in total. Listen, Nottingham Forest hasn't been particularly... I'd say the best place for number 10s to thrive as of recent years. You know, you just have to look at someone like Jao Carvalho and all the talent that he possessed. Things couldn't really click for him at Forest. I don't want to see the same happening to Luke Freeman because we all know there's a fantastic player there. Maybe it's not the system that he's suited to, or maybe it's just too early to tell because I think that with some of the other players that he can be playing off, you know, the likes of the Joe Lollies, the Anthony Narcotts, the Lyle Taylors, there's surely a player in there for Luke Freeman. Surely he's going to come good eventually. Forest fans, what do you think? And I have to admit, it's a very similar story for the player who's going to be coming in on the left-hand side. That is going to be Saman Godos. Now, initially coming in on a loan deal, Brentford do have the option to turn this one permanent at the end of the season, should they choose. He's had a bit of a stuttering start to his career at Brentford as well. It was never going to be easy coming in as that sort of direct Ben Rama replacement. You know, there's no real big issues to fill in the championship over the recent few years, has there? But Godos and Ben Rama are very much two different players. I think that Godos seems to be someone who's a little bit more comfortable in these central positions and then likes to drift wide whereas Ben Rama was very much this dynamic attacker who was brilliant at cutting inside from that left. Goff seems to be a little bit different and we've not really seen all too much from him so far in a Brentford shirt but it is very early days. So Brentford fans do let me know in the comments down below what have you made of Sam and Goddard's contribution to you guys so far this season because surely there's more to come because he was quite hyped up before he did arrive and from what I had said of him looked to be a really good player. But then to round off the video coming in as my striker and this one was a pretty tough choice to make to be honest because with a lot of the strikers that have come in on loan to championship clubs this season none of them have really got going for this season as of yet the one i decided to go for is someone who i think's got potential to really hit the ground running when he does get back from injury and that's going to be troy parrot of millwall he's come on loan from spurs this season and something that millwall have liked a little bit in their recent matches is just that killer instinct in in front of goal. They've been missing a couple of strikers recently and Troy Parrott really could be that poacher who's getting on the end of all these quality deliveries that are coming into the box from someone like Jed Wallace. Because the system that Millwall play, they've been a tough nut to crack so far this season but there have just been a couple of instances where they need to be a little bit more ruthless in the final third and Troy Parrott could be the player to go ahead and add that to Millwall's game. But guys, as you can see on screen now, those are all my picks for who I believe to be the best lone players coming into the championship this season and who you guys should all be keeping a very keen eye on so do let me know in the comments down below who do you guys believe to be the best loan signing in the championship this season I think if I had to say my top three would probably be Harry Wilson I think he'll be fantastic I also think that Harvey Elliott for Blackburn could be a brilliant one as well and also Oliver Skip for Norwich City so those are my top three picks for who I think could turn out to be the best three loan players in the championship but do let me know in the comments down below loan players from your clubs who do you who are you excited to see more of as the season progresses. But apart from that, guys, that will now wrap it up for today's video. So do go ahead and leave your best loan 11s in the comments down below. Thumbs up who you think has made the best team, and we'll give them a bit of a shout out at the start of the next video. But apart from that, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you did go into enjoy, make sure to leave a like. And like I mentioned at the start of the video, make sure to go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. We're trying to push our way towards 30,000 subscribers. We're not too far away. So if all you guys go ahead and subscribe, we'll get there in no time. But apart from that, guys, Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.